Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at some basic probability. So, I've got different examples here that's going to illustrate some different uh, facts that we need to be aware of, and I've got a few little techniques that might just help you uh, avoid making any silly mistakes. So in the first example here, uh, Ken has a bag of counters, two are white, three are black, and four are red. So the first thing I would do here is draw myself a little table to help me. So I'm going to do it down here because I've got a bit of space. So I've got white counters, I'm just going to call it W. I've got black and I've got red. So I'm going to draw myself a little table like so. And I had two white, three black, and four red. Now whenever you draw a little table, it doesn't always help. What I would always do though is draw another column that just has total. Okay, so when dealing with ratio or dealing with stuff like this, draw uh, an extra column for total, because nine times out of 10, it does come in handy. So the total here, two, uh, two out of three is five, out of four is nine. Okay, let's have a look at the question then. So what is the probability of the counter being white? Well, how many are white? Well, it's two, so two are white, and then it's always out of the total, which is nine. So it's two out of nine, that's the probability. Leave it as a fraction, because it's nice and easy. Key thing with this, do not put it as a ratio. So do not do two, nine like that. That is not a probability. You will lose all of your marks if you write it as a ratio. You can write it as a fraction, decimal, or a percentage, but definitely not a ratio. But to be honest, with these types of questions, the easiest form is definitely a fraction. So what's the probability of getting a red? Well, how many are red? Well, that's four. And again, out of a total of nine possibilities. Okay, so it's what you want out of the total. This one here, white or black, so I want white or black. Well, two are white and three are black, so that's five. So there's five possibilities that I want. So I want five possibilities. And then obviously, again, it's out of the total of nine. Not black, well, that's black. So the ones that aren't are white and red. So two are white and three are, uh, sorry, four are red. So add them together, there's six counters that are not black. So that's six out of nine, okay? And last but not least, what's the probability of getting a green? Well, there's no green at all, so we said the probability there is zero. Again, not zero out of nine. Okay, you can lose marks for doing that, so don't do that. Just put zero. There's no chance of it happening. It's just zero. Uh, next one here then, guys. This time it's been given as a ratio. So Abby has a different bag of counters containing yellow, blue, and green, and it's in the ratio of two to three to one. Abby picks a counter at random. What's the probability it's blue, green, or white? So exactly the same thing. I'll draw myself a little table. So I'll do it down here. So I've got yellow, blue, and green. And don't forget to add one on for the total because it's gonna help us. So how many do I have? Well, it's in the ratio of two, three, one. So two to yellow and three for blue and one for green, what's the total? Two, add three, add one. Obviously we're gonna have a total of six. So that's gonna help us work out the probabilities for these questions here. So what's the probability of choosing a blue? Well, there's three blue out of a total of six. Now you can simplify your fractions if you want. Personally, I wouldn't, when it's dealing with probability, I'd leave it like that. But of course, if the question says to simplify, just make sure you do. Uh, green, what's the probability of getting a green? Well, there's one green out of a possible six counters. And finally, what's the probability of getting white? Well, as you can see again, there's no white, so it's zero chance, not zero over six, it's just zero. Okay, so that's those ones, let's have a look at some more. So in this next example, okay, we're told that Gemma has a bag of 24 balls and the probability she picks a green is one third. So they're telling us what the probability is. But then it asks us, so how many are green? So if one third, or picking uh, the probability is one third, all it's asking us to do is work out what one third of the total is. Well, the total is 24, so it's one third of 24. So obviously, if you're good with these fractions, obviously we just divide by three, but if, for example, that was two thirds, just remember the rule, you divide by the bottom and then times by the top. So I'm gonna do it in full here. So 24 divided by three uh, gives us eight, then eight times one 
is eight. So how many are green? One third of 24 gives me an answer of eight. Okay. Building on from that, you could get a juicier question like this one here. So this one here, we're told there are 25 boys and 32 girls in a club. Three fifths of the boys walk there, a half of the girls walk there. The club leader picks a child at random from the children who walk to the club. What's the probability he picks a boy? Now with a question like this, they don't tell you this sort of information for nothing. And there's usually marks awarded for doing each line as it comes. So that's what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is find out three fifths of the boys. Well, there's 25 boys in total, so I need to work out three fifths. So three fifths of 25. So exactly the same thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to divide by the bottom. So 25 divided by 5 gives me 5. And I'm going to times my answer by the top. So 5 times 3 is 15. So 15 of the boys walk to the club. And we're told that half of the girls walk there. So a half of the total number of girls, which is 32. So half of 32, you can do the same trick if you want, but just half 32 is obviously 16. Okay, so you probably get a mark awarded for each of them in the real exam. Now this is the key bit of where people are gonna make mistakes. What some people will do is they'll get the total of the boys and the girls, and then that's what they'll have as a denominator. But read the question carefully. It says the club leader picks a child at random from the children who walk to the club. So that's what you need to do. Have a look at the children that walk to the club. So again, I'm gonna draw my little table. I've got boys girls, and a total. How many boys walk to the club? We just worked that out, it was 15. How many girls walk? 16. So what is the total? 15 out of 16 is 31. That's the total of boys and girls who walk to the club. So that's gonna be our total. So when it asks, what is the probability he picks a boy? Well, if he's picking from the group of people who walk to school, I'm using this table here, 15 of the lads walk out of a total of 31 people who walk. So be very careful, read the question, and make sure you've got the right total. Um, yeah, so that's that example. And oh, there goes my lid. I was gonna get last example to show you, um, which is this one here. So again, this is extra, uh, very common in exams where they've given you a table and they've given you some probabilities. Now in this case, the probabilities are decimals. Like I said, fractions, decimals, or percentages are absolutely fine, but not ratio. And in this particular question, they want us to work out the missing probability of red. So the other rule that you need to be aware of is that if you know all the possibilities, in this case we do, we've got blue, green, red, and yellow, so I know everything that can happen, the probability will add up to one. In which case, that's what we're gonna, well that's the fact we're gonna use to help us find out what red is. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add up the ones I do know. I'll do it over here. So 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0 0.25, so I'm gonna add these all up. I'm just gonna add in my missing zero so I don't get confuzzled. Zero add zero add five is five. Five add two add two is nine. Decimal point and zero. So if I add up the probabilities that I do know, I get 0 0.95. And like I said a minute ago, if you know all the possibilities, they're gonna add up, all the probabilities will add up to one. So I'm gonna do one, take away all the ones that I know which will leave me with 0 0.05. So that's the probability I will choose red. Okay, so just a quick fact there, they all add up to one. And again, this is a very common question. If they've told you the probability or you've worked out the pro what the probability is, they could then go, well, if there are 120 counters in total, how many are green? Well, let's have a look. The probability of getting a green is 0 0.2 and there's 120 counters. So all I do is do 0 0.2 times by 120 and that's gonna tell me the answer. And if you're not too confident with multiplying decimals, different ways you can do it. You can draw the pocket method and uh, move the decimal point uh, along the diagonal. If you're unsure about what I mean by that, check out my multiplying video. But most commonly for these sorts of ones, nice, quick and easy, everyone's happy to go, well, two times 120 is 240. But obviously I've changed the question. I've moved the decimal point once to the right to get it to be two. So my answer, I've just got to go back one and move it once to the left. So I've 
If I go to the right, I then go to the left of my answer. So I'll have 24.0, which of course is just 24. Other ways you could do it, you could say, well, 0 0.2 is a fifth. So you could do one fifth of 120. Absolutely fine. Um, let's say different ways you can do it, but that's how you, that's one way to do it. Uh, hopefully that helps guys. Just some basic probability uh, stuff there. Thanks for watching.